Hi everyone, this is Lorenzo Galelli. I'm a product manager at Veritas looking after Net Backup Resiliency. Today I'd like to talk to you about a cool new feature for continuous data protection that we've added to Net Backup 9.1. Let's take a look at the solution and how it works in more depth. So as we pick up the, um, the demonstration of the solution, we've already deployed the Net Backup Media um, Server, which is acting as a gateway for the continuous data protection solution. Um, this is a build your own Linux media server, which we'll be um, using uh, for the collection of relevant data for the workloads that we want to enable uh, the continuous data protection for. But let's have a look at the process of adding in the Net Backup Media Server into the relevant um, configuration itself. So what we'll do, we'll click on the VMware as the workloads which we're looking to protect. And under VMware settings, the drop-down box will allow you to add in the continuous data protection gateway. Um, we've got a number there already, but basically what you'd do is you'd add in the relevant host name and also the storage path, which is where the uh, relevant data will be staged. Uh, for the protection or ongoing protection really of the uh, relevant workloads which will be subscribed to this um, protection plan. Um, what we'll do now is we'll just create the protection plan um, which will be for the VMware workloads. At this point you can see a checkbox there which we'll um, select which will then enable continuous data protection um, so relevant um, data will be sent to that media server gateway. Under schedules, you have the option then of selecting the relevant um, recovery point objectives. Uh, with 9.1, we've got a minimum of 30 minutes, which can also be increased, um, along with the um, various values for retaining the, the data or retention policy for that. Um, so with the protection plans uh, configured, and again, we can look at the relevant configuration and see um, various features which have been enabled for this protection plan. We can then switch over to um, the relevant workloads that we want to subscribe to this pr protection plan itself. Um, we can see a number of VMs already in this protection plan and we can utilize a filter. Um, and this workload in particular is the one which the demonstration will go through. Um, so as we want to add um, VMs to the protection plan. Um, we can then go to the workload section and then drill down to the VMware for the workloads and then the various workloads will be listed underneath there uh, and we can see you know we can then subscribe those to the various um, protection plans which have been created. Um, so it's a matter then of selecting the various workloads and then subscribing to the protection plan. Um, a, a note on this that the VM itself, um, we use VIO for the um, various IO filtering of the hypervisor technology. So the storage policy uh, for the IO filter needs to be applied to the relevant storage disks of the workload that is going to be protected as well. And um, we can see here that the VM uh, last backup was at 957. Um, we can also get a view of the various recovery points which are available for the virtual machine. Um, if we look at the activity monitor, that should give us a view of the various activities which have occurred. And again, if I look at uh, the VRP under one underscore one uh, VM, we can see the various backup uh, jobs which have occurred for this to date. Um, so this will give you information on those uh, 30 minute window intervals which we're using for the backup um, protection plan in particular for this VM. Um, so if you want to go through the process of recovery, um, th there's a number of ways you can do this. Obviously, we can highlight the various uh, virtual machine that we're looking to uh, recover data from. Um, under recover points, you get a list of the various recovery points um, going back from you know, your retention policy, which is applied. Um, you then have the ability to uh, select the various recovery point that you want to interact with. Um, and by doing so, you'll also get the ability to have the option to recover the whole virtual machine. Uh, you can also create instant access uh, virtual machines from the recovery images, as well as downloading or restoring files and folders uh, from the virtual machine uh, as well. Um, so that's one process. The other process for recovery that you could utilize is the resiliency platform. 
and here we're looking at the same virtual machine this has been um, associated into a resiliency group which is a a unit of recovery which could collect you know a, a single vm or it could be a bunch of vms um, that you want to associate for the, with the resiliency group itself um, we can see here the service objective which has been associated to the resiliency group and it's currently achieving you know, its various recovery point within that four hour window time frame. Um, we can see the images which are being um, replicated via air between the production and disaster recovery site. Um, the real benefit of the resiliency platform is the orchestration and automation engine which is incorporated in the solution. What this allows you to do is here we're selecting the disaster recovery site uh, and we can automate the testing of the various uh, images available to us, either the latest or a time range. Um, so here, if I look at the last um, three days, I can um, spin back to that point in time that we saw on the NetBackup web UI, uh, which I think was about 5.27 p.m. on June the 4th. Um, that could obviously be selected and then used for testing purposes. Uh, we'd also track that to um, provide input or output to the user in relation to the test cycles that have achieved um, against that image if it was successful. So with that, I'll, I'll stop the, um, the very brief but hopefully gives you an overview of the environment and what's possible utilizing continuous data protection with NetBackup. So please join me next time for more feature updates on NetBackup resiliency and thank you very much for watching.